Mercedes to Harker Bay, Toronto Johnson. Hmm? I call yeah. for a Moorish court on Brother Toronto Johnson. And anybody who's was trying to get him out the bed. With this scandal. Like, I didn't want to get up. With these videos of me and my wife defrauding the people. Check it. I never saw my brothers and sisters serving these packages when I was with Dawid Ali Hill and them and Taj and them used to come to Chicago. Uh, uh, I laid them old boys to rest. They was dead to sleep anyway. Sleep walking. They keep talking. I probably kept a charge and they don't care what any say. Nobody. Yeah, I'm the people's grand chief and the people's grand chief. Ain't seen a man I can't be. Only the gods is my people. You mortals, you just my sequel. You just my sequel. What the 85 ers Dip, dip, divers. Trying to, to sell the lavas. You already did. Who done got up in your head? Rent free. You wanna know who sent me? Who sent you? Oh, let, let, oh. I tried to pull you out the bed, but uh, you got a ball froggy, started talking real crazy, eyes foggy, couldn't see through the fog, then I had to bring the dogs, barking all up in your ear, acting like you, you don't care, or you don't care, like you don't preserve life, oh yeah, and you really don't care, right, or you don't care, right, well we gon' really check that, bet that, that, respect that, since you said you ain't scared to die Blah, blah, bah, bah. Ooh. Ooh. I laid them young boys to rest yeah. They was dead sleep anyway Dead sleep anyway I laid them old boys to rest Show. They was sleepwalking anyway. Sleep anyway I'm the people's grand sheep I ain't seen a man I can't be I, so. I, can't be. I laid them young boys to rest They was sleepwalking anyway I will take you on any day. any day Michigan, New York, what? Cali, where you at? What you thought? First. From that town to Baltimore Every vulnerable is all raw It's ready, chop I don't really think you want the problem Hold up, raise the thought up Back to a law A law, law Um, uh, lay, lay, um, uh, hey I try to get him off the bed That's right. I 
I'll be there more you gon' remember To Arca Bay front line Till the law called my you were friends with the Moors Then you a friend of mine I was told to watch my enemies Now hold my line Those who speak against the prophet They speak against me And I'm speaking about the prophet Over Drew Ali Who was the first to remind you And bind you back To Morocco, the mountains Mississippi and Quebec Told you you wasn't black Prove it with straight facts You tripping off Trump You need to be tripping off that Now here we go again Acting like you a slave The same people talk European I'm a babe And look at that women Buying European hair No love for self But do the men really care? Have now Cause they got a love for Europe Whole generation chasing pills We deserve Yeah they love no yachty Tucci, Gucci, Kodak, Amigo, Ross but when I love for the woman look like your mother I guess they say it's all black when it's under the cover Now cypher, I'll be that more you gon' remember I'ma be that more you gon' remember That's right, I'll be that more you gon' remember To Harker Bay front line till the law call my number I'll be that more you gon' remember I'ma be that more you gon' remember That's right, I'll be that more you gon' remember To Harker Bay front line till the law call my number the workers. You ain't building on the ground, then you worse than a twerker. You look and sound good, but that's only on the surface. Probably working for the people. Now tell me what your purpose. Ain't worried about your homie, but know that I know every mo that rock a fast. He ain't my bro. Yeah, you know I ain't slow. I seen it all before. How they try to kill the prophet, it was all for show. And some got it right now. Don't say that I'm not down. I'm coming for my vast mistake. I want my town. My shirt, my stores, my school, my nation Sick and tired of the procrastination and debate Y'all keep hate when love is the savior You don't love yourself so you can't love your neighbor That's why you kill and fight and marry out of your race If you ain't for Moorish world then get out of my face Cause Chinese love China, Italians love Italy If you should love the Moorish world come on and build it with me Let's go I'll be that more you gon' remember I'ma be that more you gon' remember That's right I be that more you gon' remember To hawk a bay front line till the law call my number I be that more you gon' remember I'ma be that more you gon' remember Oh That's yeah right. I be that more you gon' remember To hawk a bay front line till the law call my number I be that more you gon' remember Be more I be that more you gon' remember That time I be that more you gon' remember To hawk a bay front line till the law call my number I be that more you gon' remember LA I be that more you gon' remember That's New York right. I be that more you gon' remember The Harker Bay front line to the law call my number Here we go All right, all right, Islam family I'm bringing our brother uh, Eric Muhammad in here I want to make sure that y'all can hear him clear I want to make sure y'all that, that y'all can hear from Claire. I'm sorry for the delay. Um, I thought, I don't know why I had the, uh, the mic off, but uh, let me uh, allow my brother to come on in and see if y'all can hear. So brother, repeat yourself again. Introduce yourself, brother. Minister Eric Muhammad, Muhammad's Temple Number 15, Atlanta, Georgia. And that sounds real good. I mean... All right, that sounds real good. Let's see if we can get some feedback real quick. Now, so I don't know. I'm going to put a timer up. Will you be able to see the timer that I'm going to put up for us? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to put it. You know, you probably got a delay from your screen, but I'm going to make sure that I can put a timer up. Give me one second. Get this timer in order. Okay, people hear you good and clear. All right. And so let me let me let the people know what this is about. So, so family, uh, me and brother Eric Muhammad uh did an interview recently. And um, <laughs> unbeknownst to me, following up on the interview, brother Eric Muhammad made a statement, and I think the statement is uh, do you remember the statement that you made, brother? Yes, I do. Uh, would you repeat the statement for the for the people so we can give it some, uh, you know, like we're not just having some buffoonery going on. We 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 going to have an educated discussion. Um, but what brought about this is the statement that one of, uh, I guess, the brothers that was disagreeing with you, 
uh, brought to light. And uh, what was that statement, brother? He said that I disrespected Noble Drew Ali in my lecture yesterday. Right. And and how did how did he consider that disrespect? Like, what did he? What did you say that supposedly be disrespect? That's for him to answer, not for me. Oh, okay. Well, in in the lecture, what he was talking about. I'm going to deliberately, after I say something that might make you like me, I'm going to deliberately and belligerently say something that I know going to make you not like me. And I'm going to love every damn minute. <laughs> We because listen. you got me not liking you, right? Sometimes I say mosques. And I didn't say Muslims because of nothing you Moors is talking about. So don't get happy. <laughs> I said Muslims to be a buck crack. I said Muslims to be a nick. I said Muslims to be disagreeable and belligerent. Go ahead. Talk black to me. So basically, I, I forget the I forget the checkpoint, but basically, you you said that Prophet Noble Drew Ali or Marcus Garvey wouldn't inspired by God. Uh, they're not basically not God men, and Master Farad Muhammad is basically. If I, I I may be misquoting you a little bit, but that was the gist of what was said. And and correct me if I'm in error. He said, I disrespected Noble Drew Ali. He cited the minute mark where I allegedly disrespected Noble Drew Ali. He said the minute mark was at the one hour and 20 minute mark of my lecture. Right. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can get to the hour and 20 minute. Because I forgot the minute mark. I'm glad you could remember that. Just to bring it to some uh, some clarity for the people. Okay, here we go. And no power to save himself from the enemies of him. Mm. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad stood up and talked this message and there was no power greater than the white man backing him. The white man would have smashed his behind. Right. Say that. You who are my beloved brothers and sisters of the UNIA. Mm. Here you go. Again, never think I'm pandering to you. Because, see, I'm about to say something to anger you. Mm. If I say you, my beloved brother or sister, I'm only saying it because I mean it. Because if I was pan pan uh, pandering to you, I wouldn't be saying what's coming after. You who are my beloved brothers and sisters in the Moorish Science Temple of America. I'm not saying that because I'm pandering to you. Because I'm about to say something to get at you too. See? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is safe from Minister Eric. Even Minister Eric ain't safe. From his <laughs> Let me tell you something. As great a leader as Marcus Garvey was, God did not back him. You ain't listening to me. He wasn't backed by the power of God. As great a teacher as Noble Drew Ali was, he was not backed. And there you go. You said we uh as great as a teacher noble Drew Ali was, he was not backed by the power of God. Now, that's what led us to this conversation, as well as uh uh this dialogue, if you will, slash debate. And so, uh, if you will, um, we're going to start off talking. Uh, you get, I want to try to find me a time. Let me see if I can find a timer real quick. Let me go online and find a timer. Give me one second. 
And so, you know, you got time clock. Okay, here we go. Let me find a time clock real quick. Oh, I need a stop clock on top of the time clock. Okay, so I got I got the stop clock right here. And so the objective of this conversation is to uh, demonstrate that Prophet Noble Drew Ali wasn't backed by God and that Master Farad Muhammad was backed by God. Am I right? You the one called for the dialogue, so I don't know what the dialogue's objective is. No, I I, I sent you uh uh the 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 outline of what we were talking about. You know what I mean? Who is authentically backed by God? Who is God? Who is the prophet? Who is the real deal? Right. Right. You are the one who called for the dialogue, so you are the one who knows what the objective of the dialogue is. Yeah, no, I'm what trying I'm to make sure that is, you, that you know too, so we can get into it. Okay. So, I so accept whatever you say. I mean, are we clear that that's the objective of this this conversation? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. So, would you like to start, or would you like me to start? I would like for you to start. All right. So I'm gonna start. See, I can't even share the uh the because I need my screen share. So take your time. Let me. I'm gonna do it on my phone. I'm gonna have to use my phone for my screen so I can see my time. I want to keep my time right. So let me use my phone for my time. Give me a second. Uh give me one second. I just need to find a stopwatch on my phone. Time, 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 time. Where you at, huh? Okay, there we go. All right, stopwatch. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my phone around. All right. So as you see, I'm about to stop momentarily. As you see, I'm going to stop momentarily. Take your time. And set my phone right here. So we all can see it. Give me a second. All right, that way everybody can see it. All right. So, here we go. So, first of all, our dialogue is about um, who is authentic. Let's get into it. I don't mean no uh, harm or disrespect to anybody as I present this presentation. So, if you don't have thick skin, you're going to have to keep it moving because we're about to get busy. So, what you're about to see right now is two things. Brother Eric Muhammad has mentioned quite a few times that Master Fraud Muhammad was God in the person. I've heard him mention it quite a few times, and I'm pretty sure that you have too. But now, what exactly does that mean? Is God in the person the same as a prophet? of God or is God in the person different from a prophet? Let's deal with it from this angle first. If like Eric Muhammad says that God, Master Farad Muhammad is God in the person, then we need some explanation from this article, because first we got to clarify if he's God or if he's a prophet. So from this final call of, to Islam, Detroit, Michigan, August 25th, 1934, 
published by the Temple of Islam. It says, and if let me let me get my um my pointer. And if thy our people Israel, and they're talking about Israel and Solomon, and the, but that's not the point. Be the worst before the enemy because they have sinned against thee. Because ignorance and shall return to our own and confess thy name, which, and I guess that would say a law, and pray. And notice that Elijah's using the term Muslim, as he said the other day that Muslim is a European term. Well, Elijah is actually using the term Muslim in this publication. And make supplication, earnest fees that Islam is right. And there is no, again, there is no God but Allah and his prophet Fard, Muhammad, his prophet. So again, first thing we have to do is find out, is Fard Muhammad the prophet of God like he was in 34? Or is he actually God in the person in 2020? So it says, Prophet Fraud Muhammad, Allah, I mean, his prophet, before thee in the temple of Islam, and thou from the heavens, holy Mecca, and forgive thy sin. So in this article written by the honorable Elijah Muhammad, he's calling Fraud Muhammad a prophet. So again, if it's changing from a prophet or God, or if that's synonymous, that's one thing we need to know. Secondly, who is Master Farad Muhammad? Well, when we go, and I showed this before, a clip from the FBI file talks about uh, when uh, WD Fraud entered into Detroit. And when he entered into Detroit, he entered into a space where there were nothing but Moorish Americans as it relates to religious fervor. There was Moorish Americans everywhere. The Detroit Temple was known to have 4,000 membership. So WD Fraud lands in Detroit in 1930, 1929, Prophet Noble Drew Ali uh, transition, past form, the greatest temple in the Moorish movement was temple number four out of Detroit. And by happenstance, WD fraud lands in Detroit. But when he lands in Detroit, what happens? As you can read this right here, you, I'm going to just, be, for the sake of time, I'm going to go all the way down and say, in this connection, it should be noted that W.D. Fraud was Wally F. Fraud, Fraud, Wally Fraud, Fraud Muhammad, Muhammad Ali, and these was aliases that he had, lived in Detroit, Michigan from July 30 to June 1934, which, during which time, he was instrumental in founding the Nation of Islam. AGT, AG2 report dated December 30, 1950, reflects that in 1930, a man calling himself W.D. Fraud took over a group of Negroes, which had been organized by another Negro named Noble Drew. They say Noble D. Ali, and they're spelling it O L L I E. W.D. Fraud is reported to be the organizer. So I pointed that out the other day, that what happened is, is did this guy calling himself W.D. Fraud come from Mecca or did he come from somewhere else? That's the question. And when he came, did he come with an original doctrine? That's the question when we try to qualify a prophet. First thing we got to ask ourselves, how do we qualify a prophet? We look at, if we say we follow Islam in any way, shape, or form, we follow, we qualify a prophet with, by the Holy Quran. We sent not a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people. If fraud Muhammad came from Mecca, 
Now, we still in the middle ground to trying to figure out if he's prophet or if he's a God. Elijah naming him a prophet in 34. But maybe you can clarify that later. But according to the Holy Quran of Mecca, it says that we sent not a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people in order to make things clear to them. Now, Allah leaves straying those whom he pleases, guides whom he pleases, etc., etc. Then in Surah 1636, it said, we raised a messenger in every community to tell them, serve Allah and shun evil. Now, I know you might say, well, Allah is master for Allah Muhammad, but that's not what Elijah said in 1934. However, according to universal teachings that to qualify a prophet, they are raised among the people whom that they come to serve. And when we look at fraud Muhammad, he does not fit that criteria because the claim is that he came from Mecca, with a claim that has never been substantiated. Even in the Bible, it talks about the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren. Now, people would like to say that, okay, for Muhammad, he come from Mecca, his father was an Asiatic, his mother was a European. Okay, I get that. No proof with notes whatsoever. Just hearsay, a bunch of hearsay. So, now, we're getting to the point where we're talking about, is he inspired by God? Let me see my time real quick. Is he inspired by God? I say no. The reason why I say no is very simple. The reason I say no is because when we look at the early functions of the nation of Islam or the, or the temple of Islam, you will find that at the beginning of his inception, it was a guy named Ugan Ali. Two of the cult leaders held prisoners in a psychopathic ward and receiving hospital were examined by alienists Friday. The mental process of one who calls himself Ugan Ali are radically deviated, the reports state. His sanity is extremely doubtful. His, his case must be handled with the utmost caution and the slightest word or phrase used inadvertently seems to enrage him for no apparent reason. The other Wallace Farad, Arabian leader, Leader, of course, he's telling himself he's from Mecca. And the self confessed founder is suffering from delusions that he is uh, a divinity, that he is God. So, the point that I'm making here with the connection between Ugan Ali and Wallace Fraud, when we go on into this, you'll find out that Ug uh, uh, Ugan Ali gives a deposition and says that this was all a hoax, that this was a game, and that I'm stepping out and I'm going to do what I got to do to repair what I have messed up. And that's my time for my first go. Islam. Islam. Is it time for me to go, brother? Yes, whenever you're ready. Hold on, let me reset. Whenever you're ready. First of all, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us just how we use the term God, just how we use the term prophet, and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in teaching us how we use that term, can be quoted as saying, uh, God and the scientists of Islam, as you call them prophets, in explaining what it is that he means by our theology. So when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches of God, when he teaches of the scientists of Islam, we call, and when he said, as you call them, he was speaking of us, we call prophets or call those men prophets who are 
properly God and the scientists of Islam. Now, we have, for the past 6,000 years, only had with us the knowledge of prophets. We were not given the knowledge of God. So the only definition of prophet that we knew of, the only definition of prophet that we were familiar with is someone chosen by God, raised by God, <laughs> with a message from God to a people who are to be resurrected spiritually by God. See, keep in mind, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, what I bring you is a new Islam. Here come Negroes. I'm going to be nice and say Negroes. Here comes the poor, deaf, dumb, blind, hard-headed, stiff-necked, and rebellious damn Negro. You want to argue with God, and you want to argue with the messenger of God, a man that told you he brings you a new Islam. And before you can sit still five minutes like a kindergarten child, before you can sit your behind still for five minutes, shut the hell up and listen and learn, you want to argue with God and argue with him through his messenger with an old Islam that he never claimed to be teaching in the first place. Don't come to me with the definition that you know of prophet. Because the definition that you know of prophet is from an old Islam that is the wisdom of prophets. The messenger said he was bringing you a new Islam where only the principles would remain the same. And he brings you that new Islam from the wisdom of God. Now, with respect to Master Farad Muhammad's birth, Master, Fa Master Farad Muhammad's nationality, Master Farad Muhammad's this, that, and the other thing, you say what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught from Master Farad Muhammad is unsubstantiated and hearsay, and then you bring unsubstantiated hearsay against what you claim is unsubstantiated hearsay. Y'all act like you was in the damn hospital when Master Farad Muhammad was born or something. You knew Jack, Johnny come lately, just hit the scene, got 68 million and 634,000 square miles of water behind your damn ears. You just learned how to say and spell Islam 15 minutes ago. But you act like you are so wise and you are so knowledgeable and got so much research that on February the 26th, 1877, you were standing next to Master Farad Muhammad's mother watching him come from between her damn lady. You don't know nothing about Master Farad Muhammad except what Master Farad Muhammad told you about himself through his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, if you want to call this man a liar with respect to what he said about his own self, then you do that. Who cares? I'm about to take you seriously anyway. So go ahead and to say that Master Farad Muhammad is lying about his birth, his nationality, and his life. You don't have nothing but unsubstantiated hearsay. Now, with respect to Master Farad Muhammad taking over a group that was led by Noble Drew Ali, look, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching on Master Farad Muhammad is clear. Master Farad Muhammad did not, by some coincidence, land in no damn Detroit. Master Farad Muhammad came to America for the specific purpose of finding that sheep, that lost member of the Asiatic Black Nation, members of the tribe of Shabazz, who were lost. He came searching for that 
tribe of Shabazz or those lost members of the tribe of Shabazz who had been lost among strangers for 400 years. He found us. He was looking for one of us to raise as a messenger. The messenger teaches us that Master Farad Muhammad studied for 42 years in order to raise him among us as a messenger. Master Farad Muhammad didn't come over here and take over no damn group. Master Farad Muhammad came over here and started knocking on doors. That's where the Jehovah Witnesses get it from. They get it from us. Master Farad Muhammad didn't come over here and do what is said in no FBI files or no other unsubstantiated hearsay. He knocked on doors and began to teach individuals of us, and they would invite him back to their homes so that those that they wanted to hear what he told them could hear. Well, they bust out of the home. And then they needed to start renting halls. And so they started renting halls. And the teaching grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And what you have today is the nation of Islam. So all this ridiculous, revisionist history of Master Farad Muhammad is just that. It is ridiculous and it is revisionist history of Master Farad Muhammad. Again, as I wrap up my few minutes, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad can be quoted in having taught us of the term prophet and of the term God. He can be quoted as having said God and the scientists of Islam as you call them prophets. You didn't know that the word prophet had more than the meaning that the old world of Islam taught you of. You didn't know that because you didn't have knowledge of the new Islam that Messenger Elijah Muhammad was bringing to us. So when, you, when we said prophet for us, it didn't mean what you perceived it to mean from your knowledge and study of old world Islam. I'm sorry, you have no point. Secondly, if you want to know whether Master Farad Muhammad is God or a prophet, it is very dishonest and very disingenuous for you to try to go all the way back to 1934 to a final call of Islam when you know damn well there are all kinds of articles in the Pittsburgh Courier and three other black newspaper publications which later could be found, they were called Muhammad Speaks, Mr. Muhammad Speaks, which later could be found in Salam magazine, which later could be found in Muhammad Speaks newspaper, articles that were compiled to form into the books that you know of. How to Eat to Live, one and two. Our Savior has arrived. Fall of America. Message to the black man. You know good and damn well that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught for 40 long time. years that Master Farad Muhammad was God in person. Yes, sir. Time, brother. So, so to your point, you said that, let me start my time. Oh, oh let me reset. So you said that uh, Elijah Muhammad was teaching a new Islam and that you are correct. And that Islam is an Islam that is associated, that had been adulterated from the Morris Science Temple of America. As you can see, you should, um, you could come on a show anytime you want to, but as you can see, uh, you look at the uh, the thumbnail sketch of, uh, there's a thumbnail sketch that um, Elijah Muhammad put out from, um, uh, 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 I guess it's like a public, it's from the public relations department. And he puts that out in Chicago and the thumbnail sketch is a, uh, uh, an exact replica of the divine constitution and bylaws to some degree, if you will. 
And if you if you would look if you would understand the Morris Science Temple of America from its beginning, um, the red and the white was always the Morris Science Temple of America colors. And looking at this thumbnail sketch, this is the Morris Science flipped inside out, known as Muhammad's Temple. And so, when you look at this, right, you will find that. Let me go right here real quick. This is an article many may have seen, many may have not, but I'm just going to read it just and, and, and maybe you can hear me as I read. I'm going to just read half of it. It said also there were, and this is actually from um, the Chicago, um, I forget the name of the paper, but I think of it in a minute. Also held was Stokely Delman Hart, 3801 State Street. And I have these things marked because I'm actually doing some research on this to show that wherever Elijah Muhammad went, that's where Moors were at, almost to the exact address sometimes and at the exact address at other times. Head of the Brotherhood of Liberty, P.H. Hamburari Rob, 3653 South Michigan Avenue, an aide to heart. Charles Newby, 5715 Indiana Avenue, president of the Colored American National Commission. Then it goes on to say, uh, God bless Hitler. Tojo will save America, American Negroes from the white yoke. Great Japanese victories leave fewer victims for us. Speakers asserted Muhammad killed six, six million Christians and put 90,000 uh, white heads in a poll. The nation of Islam has 30, 30 million trained soldiers who will follow Japan to world domination. And now this person that's reporting this says that typical of the propaganda are these extracts from specially written Quran furnished to the members. And in this Quran, it says, who were Adam and Eve? They are the mothers and fathers of the human family, Asiatics and Muslims. Who is God in the holy city of Mecca to keep the unbelievers away? Angels. What is the modern name of those angels? Asiatics. Are we Moorish Americans? Are we Moorish American in relation to them angels? Yes, we all have the same mothers and father. The Asiatic nations of the new world were described by Mukmud, and we know Mukmud is one of the names that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad used, Mukmud, at the, as the Moorish Americans. His name for Negro. So earlier, early on, he was giving reports to people. Now, this one of many that I have, he's giving reports saying that we are Moorish Americans. And the question and answer in which I'm reading from is actually the Moorish American questionnaire. And so when you have this journalist interviewing Mukmud or Elijah Muhammad, he actually tells the journalist that they are Moorish Americans and the journalists view the periodic, uh, 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 the, 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 the pamphlet that they're reading from. And that pamphlet is the questionnaire for Moorish Americans. So when you say that he's bringing a new Islam, you're right. It's a new Islam adapted from Moorish Science Temple of America. So, and with that new Islam, the same way that uh, the Prophet Noble Drew Ali uh, brought to us the um, nationality card. Um, that was the same exact thing that was brought to the brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam. We demonstrate the nationality identification card and they and you at that time was demonstrating the nationality identification card. If I can pull it up real quick. I don't think that's it right there. Let me see if I can. There we go. You also was demonstrating the nationality or basically the identification card. And if you look real close, you made a statement the other day on the show. You said Muslim is a, is a white man term. Well, maybe Elijah is a white man because he actually uses the term Muslim and almost... Every part of the organization before 1950. And if you look closely, 
you'll find that, I mean, if you study and understand what these cars was used for, they were actually being sold, you know, and this is what uh, uh, Brother Ongla say, it was the racket. The racket was selling the cards. And so it say the bearer, the bearer of this is a reg registered Muslim. And on our card, it say, I do, I do hereby declare that you are a Muslim. It's just a little flip of what is being said. It's just a flip on words, but it's the same exact thing to a degree. Now, so when you say that they brought a, that Elijah Muhammad uh, or brought a new Islam, you're right. They brought the new Islam that was bought by Prophet Noble Drew Ali, but with a little twist. Now, when you say that uh, Master Farad Muhammad came from Mecca, my problem is, is that we never have confirmation. No, there is no proof. There is no nothing. We just say it. And we say that the messenger said that he did. And so it is so. But we know we can't go through life like that. We need facts to go through life. But if we say that he's a prophet, give me a second. If we say that he's a prophet, let's examine some of the early teachings of this uh, man of God, you will, or prophet of God. Let's go. Let's examine some of the early teachings. So I ask you and anybody else for that matter, um, is this teaching still relevant today? Because we believe truth don't change or pass away. Now, if he's God or prophet, let's look, examine the early teachings. The early teachings is this. Children and adults as well were taught that if they cut off the heads of four devils, usually unrighteous Caucasians, they would be given a free trip to Mecca and a button to wear on their dress or on their coat lapel. This was being taught in the University of Islam. Uh, why does Muhammad and other Muslim murder the devil? And what is the duty of each Muslim in regards to four devils? What reward does he receive by presenting the heads of four devils to the prophet, again, they're calling Muhammad, fraud Muhammad, a master fraud Muhammad, a prophet at one time. And this is the question and answer that is taught. This was, this is not something somebody's making up. This is something that was taught and that was handed down. It says each Muslim is required to kill four devils by presenting, and by presenting the four heads, he receives his reward of a button for his buttonhole and transportation to Mecca to pass a visit with his brother Muhammad. So now the question is, is that how God moving that we're going to cut four heads off a of European or is that metaphorical? Um, so I'll stop right there. Uh, so so let me let me wrap this up. So one point is this. What you're teaching is an adulteration and an adaptation of the teachings of Prophet Noble Drew Ali, number one. Number two, do God send a prophet from a foreign land or do God come from a foreign land to help a people that's not his own? There's nowhere in history that that ever happened. Nowhere in history. Buddha went to his people. Confucius went to his people. Muhammad went to his people. Noble Drew Ali went to his people. Secondly, is if this is the word of God, why we don't see people cutting off four heads of devils in this day and time and get this thing popping? That's my time. You know, it's very, very difficult to argue with utter insanity when you are saying, brother, stop playing. There was never children taught in the University of Islam that they had to cut off four heads of four white people in order to get free transportation to Mecca. Stop it. You don't even believe that's what they were taught. And if you do, then you are less sane than I have ever considered you to be. That's a damn lie. That's number one. Number two, 
I've already explained to you. If you don't like the explanation and don't want to accept it, I don't give a damn. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad's definition for prophet includes God. And it also includes the scientists of God. Y'all men don't like it? What the hell do I care? I don't give a damn what y'all niggas like and don't like. You ask me to explain what Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teaching is, and I'm telling you what his teaching is. Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teaching from Master Farad Muhammad on the meaning of the term prophet includes God, and it also includes the scientists of God. Now, you say... Never in history has a prophet gone to another people. We are Master Farad Muhammad's people. What the hell are you talking about? My name is W.F. Muhammad. I came to America by myself. My uncle was brought over here 379 years ago by the traitor. He does not know he is my uncle. Master Farad Muhammad named us his people. So what are you talking about? Master Farad Muhammad is not from one people and we from a whole other people. We are Master Farad Muhammad's people. That's why he came looking for us. So that's the second point uh, that you made. Look, brother, you say that the teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which actually is the teaching of Master Farad Muhammad. Y'all always want to zero in on Elijah, as if Elijah made this up. What the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us was what he was given to teach us by Master Farad Muhammad. It's his teaching. It's his message. That the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the man that he chose to deliver that message to us. So you say that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's teaching is an adulteration of Noble Drew Ali's teaching. That is ridiculous, it's stupid, it's retarded. Get the hell out of my face. What the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches is what Master Farad Muhammad revealed to him, period. If, are you saying that Master Farad Muhammad came to America and became a student and disciple of Noble Drew Ali, and then he took the teachings of Noble Drew Ali, and he uh, uh, adulterated braided it, and twisted it and flipped it and made it something and then gave that to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to teach us for 40 years? Listen, if that's what you Moors want to believe, go to hell on and believe it, but you ain't pulling that Mickey Mouse crap over on me. That's what Farad Muhammad came here from Mecca with this message already intact. He didn't get it from over Jirali. He came over here with this message intact. And for you to say, well, we want facts. We ain't just accepting what Elijah Muhammad said. Well, who the hell is Elijah Muhammad to say anything about Master Farad Muhammad? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't know Master Farad Muhammad until he met Master Farad Muhammad. Master Farad Muhammad told the most honorable Elijah Muhammad about his birth and early life. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us the information about Master Farad Muhammad's birth and early life that Master Farad Muhammad gave to him. You done lost your damn mind going to tell Master Farad Muhammad through those of us who follow his messenger that he don't know what the hell he's talking about. He got to prove to us that he who he say he is. Hell no, he don't. You got to prove it in. If a man comes to us and tells us, hey, my name is W.F. Muhammad, I came from here, and this is my uh, history, my early life, blah, 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 blah. Who the hell are you, a dumb Negro in America, to decide you don't believe what he's talking about? But yet, the FBI files can 
and tell you something and you believe the damn FBI file. Yet some, some disgruntled defector can tell you something and you believe them. Man, stop playing. Master Farad Muhammad is Allah, God in person. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is his last and his greatest messenger. And what Master Farad Muhammad revealed through the most honorable Elijah Muhammad separates niggas into three categories. Believers, disbelievers, and hypocrites. Period. Point blank, plain, simple. Those of us who believe Master Farad Muhammad is God and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is his messenger are believers. The rest of you are either disbelievers or hypocrites. You want to be a disbeliever? Go to hell on and be one. No skin off my nose. You want to be a hypocrite? If you ever believe that now you disbelieve, go to hell on. Ain't no skin off my nose. You want to be a hypocrite, meaning you claim to believe, but in your heart you really don't. Go to hell on. Ain't no skin off my nose. I believe. That Allah, God, came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I believe the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is his last and greatest messenger. And ain't a damn thing you mourn, ain't a damn thing you Garveyite, ain't a damn thing you hear Israelite, ain't a damn thing none of you niggas gonna tell me that's gonna move me one inch. Because I myself am a small proof of the truth of what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said. I don't need no more time. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take my little bit of time. I'll stop you there at 722. And so, um, so, so I just want to make you aware that everything that I'm saying, I'm actually screen sharing. And you are, you always welcome to come on the show. I always tell you that. But everything that I'm saying, I'm screen sharing. So when you saying that I don't have proof, I'm actually showing proof on the screen. And I'm not showing a whole bunch of cross references because we only got a little bit of time. But I'm actually showing proof. Uh, with that being said, let me reset the clock. And let's see where we're going to go with this. So first of all, when you say Master Farad Muhammad came from Mecca, now, there's a, there's a conversation that's out there to say that um, that Master Fraud Muhammad has a bunch of identities. You follow me? Um, and that they all, these are the arrest records of Wallace D. Fraud. One in Los Angeles, one from San Quentin, one in Detroit, 1932, and one in Detroit from 1933. Now, the argument is, is that that is not the same Fard Muhammad. But the question is, is this the Fard Muhammad that got locked up for the works at a law temple of Islam? That's all we need to know. Is this the person Right here being interviewed in 1932 that got locked up in Detroit on November 24th, 1932, along with Elijah Muhammad, after a black man, quote unquote, killed a man in a sacrifice. Is this the same fraud Muhammad? Because him and Elijah Muhammad got locked up at the same time. There's an arrest record, there's a mug shot, there's pictures. The many like to argue, well, that's not for Muhammad. They made that up. But is this guy, did this guy get locked up with Elijah Muhammad? And all the evidence says yes. Now, if this is the guy that got locked up with Elijah Muhammad, and all of the evidence says yes, they trace him all the way back to San Quentin, then this guy is not from Mecca. This guy is not from Mecca at all. In the 1920 census for Los Angeles County, California shows Wally D. Ford, 
founder of the Nation of Islam was a lodger in a home with the Bushing family. So, so the point is, if this is, if Elijah Muhammad and him got locked up together, right here, 1920 census, he was living in California. He was living in California. And according to this census, he's a lodger. And I wish I would have had time to really break it down. But he was from New Zealand. If, listen, <laughs> according to the person that got locked up with Elijah Muhammad, according to the person that got locked up with Elijah Muhammad, he wasn't from Mecca. Now, with that being said, this one that was locked up with Elijah Muhammad in 1926, he was arrested in a prison for drug offenses, serving three years in San Quentin between 1926 and 1929. The same one, see, this is the thing. Many people say that's not Master Farah Muhammad. However, this guy got locked up and this guy got interrogated and this guy got locked up with uh, uh, Ungly Ali also. This one on this picture, on this mugshot. This one that's being interviewed. So the, the, the only one picture that brothers like to have is that one where he's holding the Quran or the Bible, whatever. I get it. But the person that got locked up with Ungly is right here. The person that got locked up with Elijah Muhammad is right here. It got so heavy, if you can remember, that Elijah Muhammad uh, uh, said he would pay $100,000 to prove the charge that these two are the same person. However, uh, 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 his wife stepped up to receive that $100,000. And the phone never got answered again. In fact, the point that I'm making is we asking what is authentic and what is not. We know Prophet Noble Drew Ali was born in the state of North Carolina, 1886. By the way of Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia. We know, I know, not many people know, I know that he was raised by his aunt and his uncle Ambrose. I know that he came to North New Jersey around 1910. I know that the thought of the Morris Science Temple of America came into existence in 1913. I know that in 1915, uh, 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 he, he created the Moorish National Divine Movement, 1916. And I might be chopping it up a little bit but we don't have nothing on your God. Nothing. So we asking the question is, who is authentic? Who is authentic? So let's look into it. When we look at who's authentic, here's another article. When they had a disturbance in the courthouse, this is after they left Detroit and all of the people came there to support this situation. Listen to this. Philip Rankin, 29, bailiff for the court of domestic relations, was shot in the chest and perhaps fatally wounded. The Negroes, mostly women, wore red turbans with a crescent insignia and identified themselves as member of the Temple of Islam. Who wear turbans with crescents in the front? Not the Temple of Islam. In other words, what really happened was, it was a pretty much of an infiltration and a takeover of Morrisides Temple of Americas. That's what it was. 
Fraud Muhammad didn't come from Mecca. Master Fraud Muhammad didn't come with nothing new. The white man, the double degree, is a degree easily found within the lessons of Prophet Noble Drew Ali. The Asiatic black man, you just added black man to Asiatic. The flag, you got the red flag, the red field with the white star in the crescent. We got the white flag with the red star in the crescent. Everything was reversed. And somebody say, why? Because it was a racket. It was a hustle. That's why. It was a hustle. It was a hustle. Was, was Master Farah Muhammad a member of the Mormon Science Temple of America? No, there is no evidence to that. There is no evidence that Master Farah Muhammad was a member of the Mormon Science Temple of America. None whatsoever. But what there is, is evidence is, is that he landed in Detroit not as a silk salesman, but as a pharmaceutical salesman. We got the checks. We got the checks. He landed there as a pharmaceutical salesman during the time of, of depression. During the time of the depression, people was dying. There was 4,000 Moors displaced. There was 4,000 Moors displaced because the Moorish Science Temple of America had collapsed in part. Their leadership had escaped to Turkey, Brother Lomax Bay. That's where the bow tie come from, Brother Lomax Bay. That was his style, Brother Lomax Bay. Therefore, I came from the military drills that was done right in Temple Number no. 4. We got the receipts. We know where the, we know where the FOI drills come from. Prophet Noble Drew Ali put out a mandate to stop the drills in Temple Number no. 4. They perpetuated on. And so when he landed there in 1930 on his release from San Quentin, he went to door to door. And I'm, I can show you the receipts. He went from door to door because there were over 4,000 members of the Morris Science Temple of America. And they was not able to fit in the temple building. And so they was instructed to have temple in their house. Same thing happened in Chicago. Same thing happened in Baltimore. Same thing happened in DC. And so when you read things like, let me, let me screen share real quick. When you read things like, when Elijah Muhammad said, he traveled around the country and he went to Muslim temples. You have to understand that he was going to Moorish science temples of America. And they were running him out. He was running for his life. But we can go a step further. The person that they locked up. Regardless of the person you show on your picture, the person you locked up, we got the registration card. He's born February 26, 1893. This is the person that they locked up. When they locked him up, this is the information that they that he gave them. This is what he gave them. Last but not least, I can't give you all, all of it. Last but not least, this is, this is uh, uh, Detroit. A Negro woman Fear of being sacrificed to a law in a pot of boiling water led today to evidence that activities of the voodoo cult had extended to New York, Chicago, and Canada. Investigation of the woman's story indicated police says that the Japanese deported that a, a Japanese deported after the cult murder in 1930. That was the first sacrifice where someone got killed was directing the organization weird ceremonies from a Canadian hideout. I don't know what that all about, but let's read on. Brian McQueen Negro, who calls himself Verlaine Ali, was arrested on a complaint of his wife that he was preparing to boil her and their 11-year-old daughter 
at the gathering of worship, worshipers of Allah. This meeting right here was actually put together by no other than that same Farad that they locked up and by that same Ugun Ali. Let me read some more. The practices and the influences of the cult first came to light here in November 1932 when a colored man was found slain on a makeshift altar in a home on Du Bois Street. The slayer Robert Harris readily admitted the murder and said that his victim was a sacrifice to his God. Harris, who declared that he was the king of Islam, was a judge insane and committed to uh, Iona State Hospital for criminal insane. There followed a series of raids through which the police hoped to scatter members of the cult. Wallace Farad, confessed founder of the cult, was taken into custody. That's where they get the picture from and promised to leave the city. Hold up. What's ironic about that? The Japanese. Takashi was deported because he was a Jap Japan national. Wallace Fraud promised to leave the city, not deported to Mecca because he was an American citizen. His chief lieutenant, Ugan Ali, said that he realized the danger of his teachings and that he will use his influence to, in, to abandon the order. And that's my time. But I got to ask you this. Why don't nobody speak on Ugar Ali no more? What's up with him? That's my time, brother. I done went over time, too. You can have as much time as you want. I'm not going to need a whole lot of time. And uh, I'm not the slightest bit upset about no amount of time that you took. Brother, I can't even get my juices flowing. I can't even get motivated to debate with you about this because the stuff you're saying is so stupid. It's beyond, I mean, it's beyond imagination. Come on, black man. You're going to say Master Farad Muhammad didn't bring nothing new. Do you sit here and spend overtime bringing something that ain't new either? You come in with the same old, tired, worn out, damnable devil lies from the goddamn white man. Brother, the white man said everything you just said, so you said it. Now, Master Farad Muhammad is Wallace Dodd Ford from the Vietnam. <laughs> did, <you, laughs> did you really come with that, brother? Did you really just say Master Farad Muhammad is Wallace Dodd Ford from New Zealand and that he was a drug dealer that did time in San Quentin? Come on, bro. That's who they locked up at Muhammad's temple. That's who they locked up, is what I'm saying. That's who they locked up. Master Farad Muhammad ain't been locked up in no damn San Quentin. You are basically saying without coming out directly and saying it, that Master Farad Muhammad is Wallace Dodd Ford from New Zealand. You said that Master Farad Muhammad started a racket. Master Farad Muhammad started a hustle. Master Farad Muhammad uh, uh, never was in the Moorish science temple, but he took Moorish science teachings and flipped it around and and created his hustle, whatever you saying. Uh, brother, come on. I can hardly even fix my mind to put together what the hell you just said, because it's so goddamn stupid. Can I ask you a question right. then? Well, did not yet. Not yet. But okay. Keep your question in mind. Uh look, brother. There are three types among us. Believers, disbelievers, and hypocrites. Point blank, plain and simple. I don't give a damn about your bootleg PowerPoint presentations. I don't give a flying duck what the hell you showing on no goddamn screen. It's garbage. Period. Point blank. 
and you young niggas today, and some of you young niggas is old niggas, but you young. You know what the term young is in the street. Some of you old niggas young as hell. You have become a nation of such damn idiots that all somebody got to do is give you a slide presentation with a bunch of insane garbage in the presentation and it becomes a battery in your back. And you're going to actually get your weed pushed and your lights put out running around with that battery that some idiot just put in your damn back. Let me tell you something. It is absolutely insane for you to believe that a man could, that a white man could come from New Zealand, be a drug dealer, a hustler, and a racketeer, come to Detroit and start a movement like the Nation of Islam that brought about the transformation in the lives of the black people that that transformation was brought about in, that it could be a force of good that the nation of Islam was in black America until the most honorable Elijah Muhammad departed. It is retarded as hell for you to believe that the history that you have just been given of Master Farad Muhammad by Taharka Bay could be accurate and that this man could be responsible for the miraculous transformation in the life of Malcolm Little, the miraculous transformation in the life of Lewis Eugene Walcott, the miraculous transformation in the life of Cassius Clay, the miraculous transformation in the life of Harold Moore Band, and the miraculous transformation in the lives for those of you who are personality whores and don't respect nothing and nobody till it blow up in the white man's world. There's a million such transformations that the nation of Islam is responsible for, but because those men and those women never made the white man's news, you don't know nothing about them and you don't care nothing about them. It is impossible, as the Holy Quran teaches us, Allah is he who produces the first creation then he reproduces it. Falsehood neither creates nor reproduces. Lies don't do what the teaching of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad did. Lies don't do that. Lies don't deal with the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad built. Lies don't do that. There is no force, there is no power in a lie to do what the teaching from Master Farad Muhammad through the most honorable Elijah Muhammad did in the lives of all of us that accepted it. Ain't no power in no damn lie to do that. And all of you that believe what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us from Master Farad Muhammad is a damn lie and you believe it can do as a lie what it did. You need to Throw your banana peel down, climb down from your damn tree. You a mother flipping monkey and you crazy as hell. Get out my damn face. <laughs> <It's loud. laughs> this is why I like this brother. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, just because something turns a group of people around doesn't make that, it doesn't mean that it comes from God. That's number one. Um, in fact, um, we, we have something in the Morris Science Temple of America. It's called earthly and divine salvation. Earthly salvation is predicated upon you doing the things to make you be all right for the right now. The earthly salvation. And the earthly salvation, sometimes, unless, even for our people, can open the door for, some, for divine salvation. And good intentions can override somebody introducing you to lies. Good intentions can pave the way and open the door to your greatness. So just because uh, you made a Malcolm X out of this teaching or you made a Muhammad Ali out of this teaching and you made a, all the ones you name out of this teaching, why is it that it all 
fell apart at the end. We have a saying in the Morris Science Temple of America that truth don't change nor pass away. And so within the ranks of what you say you follow, you have starting off as a lost temple. Then it opened up to the Temple of Islam. Then it goes to Muhammad Mars. Then it's trans transferred to something else. We have a saying that say truth don't change or pass away. Now, Muhammad Ali went to the Sunni community. His own Elijah Muhammad's son jumped ship. Why? There is no reason for me to take shots at any of those great leaders. But there is an essence in what is being taught that has to either be fallible or infallible. And when you look at the Morris Science Temple of America, we are consistent through and through. The reason why the Morris Science Temple of America is not as visible as it used to be during the time of the prophet is because the infiltration that happened, not only by Europeans, but Moors, such as Brother Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad was actually a member of the temple. And we're going to bring that out soon. And what he did was he went to each and every temple and tried to persuade them to join his new brand of Islam. He went to every temple. up. He traveled up and down and all around to introduce Moorish Americans to his new brand, and it almost got him killed quite quite a few times. And you know that story. But with that being said, brother, when you talk about my, my thing is still on you you saying that Wallace Dodd is a white man from New Zealand. But what I'm telling you is that the person that they locked up in Detroit, he confessed. He confessed that he was running a sham. He said this. Now we say, well, no, nah, the God daggone devil said, you believe the white man. What I'm telling you, there's enough cross references to see him saying that, okay, you got me, I'm done. And the person in the picture is the person that they pulled out the temple. So how can you come back on Monday night and say that person in the picture is not the person when that's the person that they pulled out the temple? And it's not only that the FBI report saying that, you got the newspaper report saying that, you got the eyewitness report saying that, you got Ungly Ali saying that, you got Lily Ali saying that, which is uh, uh, Ungli, white, Lily Ali, who was a member of Temple Number 4. You got her saying that that's the leader. You got Ungli saying that that's the leader. And you got the picture of the police of the one that they captured. Now, they traced that picture back to uh, 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 1932 when he got locked up for the sacrificial death. Then they traced that that same person back to 1926 with a robbery in, in, in uh, California where he got locked up. But this is the same person. And to make it so bad, a reward is put out saying that uh, from the nation, say, I will give $100,000 if you prove that this and that person is the same. And Wallace Farrar's wife steps up and said, I will take the money. She steps up and says, I will take the money. When she steps up and says, I will take the money, you don't hear nothing from it anymore. In fact, we can go a little bit deeper. The guy that was locked up in, in, in Detroit that day has a family. This is the guy that was locked up. We cannot deny the fact that he was locked up. And make it so bad, that's his son right here. Wallace Max Fraud. Oh, we didn't wait, we didn't dug deep. This is his son right here. 
and his mother is the one that provided the picture. So his mother is the one that provided the picture. And so the point that I'm making is that the concept was, is it legit? Who is legit? Master Farah Muhammad or Prophet Noble Drew Ali? Oh yeah, they, somebody said, oh he has a son now? Absolutely, absolutely. And the, the, somebody in the chat say, oh he has a son now? Absolutely. And guess what? And guess what? The wife of the guy that was locked up in Detroit, she's the one that's providing the information. She came out of hiding and said, that's my husband. She came out and said that. She said that. The one that you locked up in Detroit claiming to be God is my husband. She said that. So the, the, the problem is, the problem is not me. The problem would be find out, that's why right, somebody said Hazel, find out why would Hazel step up and say, I want that $100,000 and that's my husband that you have locked up in Detroit. So brother, I'm going to give you, I, I, think, I think we can wrap on that. Uh, and everything that I've said, I'm showing bits and pieces. Uh, I'll show some more later. But, brother, I'll let you take it away with that, brother. Call me a monkey in the tree. Bro, why you call me a monkey? I actually like you, brother. I like you, too. It ain't my fault you a monkey. What <laughs> <laughs> the hell you want from me? Goodness okay. I hope uh, I, I hope you know them FOI tricks that they be, they be showcasing. It's all right. I, I, I know everything I need to know, and if if, if anybody want to press me on what I know, I'm ready. So I ain't worried about that. Look, <clears throat> everybody talks about what I know and what I don't know, but don't know if anybody ever give me no damn examination, okay? What I don't know what to know. Look, here's the deal. Master Farah Muhammad, I'm sorry. <laughs> Master Farah Muhammad, <laughs> y'all have, y'all have married Master Farah Muhammad and gave him some kids. And y'all niggas crazy, bro. You are crazy as hell. Now you got Master Farah Muhammad got a wife. The damn chick name is Hazel. <laughs> he got a wife named Hazel. A damn son named Max. His father name is Alfonso, and his mama name is Baby G. <laughs> Man, look here. Are uh, uh, people that damn stupid? You show sure as hell need God Himself to come and save your behind. <laughs> I mean, my God, what the hell are you talking about, brother? There's three types of people, believers, disbelievers, and hypocrites. What determines the category of those people is a message. The message is what separates people into believers, disbelievers, and hypocrites. What that message produces establishes the truth of the division between the people of believer, disbeliever, and hypocrite. Master Farad Muhammad came from Mecca, like he said, <laughs> and he taught us the truth. Not a lie, not an adulteration of what Noble Drew Ali taught, not a flip of what Noble Drew Ali brought. He came to us with a divine revelation that was 1,000% true. Now, some of us accepted it as the truth. Some of us rejected it as a lie. Others of us accepted it as the truth and then retracted that acceptance and began to call it a lie. Some of us claimed 
that we accepted it as the truth, but in our heart, we really didn't believe it was the truth. So those that rejected it, those that accepted it and then rejected it, those that claimed it but didn't really believe it, those are your hypocrites. Those who rejected it outright, never claimed they believe it, are disbelievers. You, sir, are a disbeliever. Whoever the hell is in their chat, sitting up in their tree, peeling their goddamn bananas and talking slack are damn disbelievers. Unless they have ever claimed to believe and then became disbelievers, then they're hypocrites. Point blank, plain and simple. You disbelieve. Okay, what we do? <laughs> Everybody ain't gonna believe. You disbelieve. So the hell what? You think because you disbelieve something it ain't true? I believe it. And the results that it produced establish that it is the truth. You say, we have a saying, and then you talk about good intentions. Well, you said Master Farad Muhammad confessed he didn't have no damn good intentions. You can't have it both ways, bro. Master Farad Muhammad, according to y'all, confessed he was a buyer and a scammer. And therefore, he didn't have no damn good intention. So how did he have, where did the good intention that he confessed he didn't have come from to override <laughs> the result? Stop it. Stop it already. The Holy Quran is a scripture that is true. And the Holy Quran teaches us that falsehood neither originates nor reproduces. So I don't give a damn what no niggas nowhere have as no saying. I'm sticking with the Quran. According to the Quran, falsehood neither originates nor does it reproduce. So a lie does not do what the truth does. It ain't got the power in it. It ain't got the force in it. You don't make Malcolm X's out of Malcolm Little's with no damn lie. Especially when you don't have the good intentions that you claim Master Farad Muhammad confessed he didn't have. A lie does not make a Louis Eugene Walcott a minister Louis Farrakhan. And ain't nobody giving that nigga no credit for nothing he did since 1975. The Farrakhan up until the 25th of February 1975 is my man. I ain't got no issues with him. If I saw him, I'd look at him. If I heard him, I'd listen to him. Where he told me to go, I would go. Where he told me to stay from, I would stay from. Up until February the 25th, 1975. But starting with February the 26th, 1975, I ain't gonna tell you what that nigga could kiss because that would be too damn vulgar. I'm not interested. So a lie does not produce the Minister Louis Farrakhan from Louis Eugene Walcott that we know up until February the 25th, 1975. Nor the hell nor van into what became Khalid Muhammad, nor the Cassius Clay into what became Muhammad Ali, nor the, all the other examples. Point blank, plain and simple. So when a person is a disbeliever or a person is a hypocrite, Brother, the Holy Quran says that those who believe in falsehood always try to make all the truth with their falsehood. That's all you're doing. You come in with your disbelief and you trying to put out the light of Allah, Master Farad Muhammad, and you will achieve naught. There will be naught achieved except the perfection of his light, as the Holy Quran teaches. Your history of Master Farad Muhammad is the falsified history of the white man. You can talk all this witnesses and reports and all of that other crap, but you wouldn't know nothing about it if the white man hadn't brought it. 
You are only talking about witnesses, reports, and everything due to the FBI presenting it. None of these damn witnesses came to none of you damn niggas and told you nothing. You ain't got no first-hand information from the situation that you claim and you got knowledge about. You got your information from the goddamn white man. You believe it, you accept it, you embrace it, but you wouldn't know nothing about it if the white man didn't apprise you of it. So stop playing. Period. What you have just done is no different from what these lying comedic science niggas do. They come talking about uh, 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 Islam got its teachings from ancient Tibet. They just flipped it around. Now here you come. Y'all got y'all's teachings from Noble to Ali. You just flipped it around. Let me get the hell out of here. Point blank, plain, and simple. We who are believers in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad accept what he taught us as the truth. And we are the best evidence of that truth because we run circles around all you niggas who say it ain't true. And that's a fact. And you can't deny it intelligently. You only deny it emotionally. We run circles around y'all. Always have, always will. And that's why you always trying to compare yourself to us and say you better than us. You some Pepsi niggas always talking about taste test the Coke niggas. Get the hell out of my face. I'm not interested. <laughs> Tough black to me. Black to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, brother, I'm gonna leave it at that, brother, because, uh, brother, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't win, brother. So it is what it is. I'll leave it at that, and we'll let the people decide. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna have to hang up so we can have some callers. I'm not gonna say too much more. You know what I mean? But uh, yes, sir. I, I, we're gonna have some callers to call in. So, brother, I appreciate you, brother. I love you just the same. Uh, I don't care if I disagree with our philosophical approach to life. I know that our oppressor is the same. He could care less who you follow and who I follow at the end of the day. Hey. So I don't take this personal, brother. You can call me anything you want. But if you call me that in my face, brother, you're going to have to show me what you know now. That's all right. <laughs> all right now. That you got to right. you, you have that same demonstration when you see me in Atlanta. That same demonstration. That same demonstration when you see me too. Oh, brother, that's what I do. Not right, for real. That's what I do. That's what I do. I put up. I put up rainy day fans. I mean, I put the house up on this. <laughs> Slava Lego, brother. Wow, they got so <laughs> Man, that's brother Eric Muhammad, man. You gotta love him at the end of the day. Gotta love him, man. It is what it is. <clears throat> man, that brother was going on and on and on, but that's what the brother do. But at the end of the day, family, listen. At the end of the day, man, listen. I've just showed a little bit of my research, and I have tons and tons of research. And in reality, I'm going to, uh, real soon, it's already done. Um, I'm going to put out some of this research to show how the Morris Science Temple of America uh, became uh, second to the nation of Islam by the way of those members of the Morris Science Temple of America being taken towards the way of, in the beginning, Lily Ali, uh, Ugan Ali, they was members of Temple Number 4. And they were one of the first ones to uh, get busy with uh, uh, for, um, Wallace, Wallace D. Ford. They were one of the first ones to get busy with them. And um, and now this brother saying that 
Somebody's in here saying, now nah, that's the same misinformation that white men has been peddling for years. Now this is not misinformation. I got a bunch of cross references. I got a bunch of cross references, brother. But the point that I'm asking is, was somebody locked up at the Temple of Islam? And who was it? Did somebody got locked? Did somebody get locked up with uh, Ugan Ali in '32? Did somebody get locked up with Elijah Muhammad in '33? And are they the same person? Yes, they are the same person. You can't run from that. They're the same person. You follow me? They're the same person. So because they are the same person, we have to keep it a buck. See, this is the information age. You know what I mean? If if the if the F, my thing is this, forget, forget the newspaper, forget the FBI files. Let's ask ourselves, who was he that got locked up in 1932 with the sacrifice and the death that involved Robert Harris? Was it the guy? going by the name Wallace Ford or WD Ford and was it was this and was it the same guy was it the same guy that get locked up with Elijah Muhammad in 33 if that's the case the only thing that's suspect is the picture that we see and calling it Master Farrar Muhammad that's the only thing that's suspect. But the person that was locked up is clear. The person that got locked up in 32 and 33 is clear. It's clearly the same person that got locked up and did time in San Quentin. It's clear. So, there it is. There it is. So when you look at when you look at Detroit in 1930 forward again there were 4000 displaced Asiatics during the time of the depression. You know what type of desperation people were in during the time of the Depression? You know how mad they was mad? You know how they felt about that European? You follow me? You know how, you know how, you know how mad they... It was easy to, to elevate the teachings from if you must find your devil, you must look within to... The white man is the goddamn devil. It was easy to elevate because people were already disgruntled. They were already mad. They were already suffering. They were already starving. They were already starving. So it is what it is. And so the entry point, as I said, the entry point was very basic. Go to them house temples. Negro leaders, press drive. The bulk of the Negro community, headed by the welfare workers, clergymen, professionals, did it go on down. The group that marched to the headquarters Thursday was led by Lily Ali. She was a member of Temple Number Four, a, 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 a valuable a Negress, and the wife of Ugan Ali, secretary of the Islamic cult. Many wore red fezes. The Mohammedan aspects of the sect police trace to Wallace Farad. Again, calling him an Arabian, saying that it's to be its founder. Fearing that such a meeting might result in an outbreak, police 30, Thursday arrested four men believed to be ringleaders detailed by the cult chief. In other words, the cult's 
chief told them to go get these four guys. Who is the cult's chief? To round up the members for the gallery, the men arrested were, gave their names as A. Muhammad, Oscar Zarif, Cornelius Bay. Who carried the title Bay? Who carried the title Bay? Who wears fezes? <coughs> and Wallace Muhammad. You follow me? That coming to Detroit was all about filling the void from the Morris Science Temple of America. It is what it is. So somebody said, real FOIs have nothing bad to say about a uh, more, and we should get that same respect. In fact, brother, um, the Morris Science Temple of America has been swept under the rug, brother. It, it, it was clearly a takeover of Morris Science Temple of America house temples in Detroit. You follow me? And I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, saying anything uh, disrespectful. I'm actually showing receipts of history. And receipts of history shows that uh, uh, the brother uh, or whomever he was calling himself uh, 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 W.D. Ford, he was going door to door and recruiting Moorish Americans into. And at that time, that's why when you study the teachers early on, that's why the teachers don't even, they didn't really take shape until Elijah Muhammad went to prison. Um, the teachers really didn't take shape until he went to prison in the fifties. You know what I mean for for the for the for the uh, for the war draft. But earlier, but earlier on. So brother, say no receipts propaganda, brother. I, I didn't gave you, brother. I didn't gave you. What more do you want, brother? I didn't gave you newspaper clippings. I didn't gave you, you don't know, I gave you stuff from books. I just didn't source it. I gave you newspaper clippings. I gave you stuff from books. I only read one thing from the FBI file. I only read one thing from the FBI file. I don't even, I don't, I don't trust the FBI file. I only read one, I maybe read two things from the FBI file. I'm actually reading from what journalists say, and I read from the book. The 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 picture uh, that was submitted of of, of W.D. Farr's son that came from a book that actually came from the original that was to be submitted for a book. She was actually interviewed. But anyway, with that being said, family, I want to thank Brother Eric Muhammad. I'm just telling you, it's more Science Temple of America time, and uh, no longer will they be sweeping the more Science Temple of America under the carpet. It's just not going to happen. You, you, no, no more will the Morris Science Temple of America be denied. You know what I mean? It's, it, it will not be denied. You know? We know what happened. We know what happened. We know exactly what happened. It is what it is. And as we move forward, we're going to tell what happened. Because Prophet Noble Drew Ali is a holy and divine prophet. And his space is his space. And to not and to deny the people of their prophet by creating another prophet. Come on. You deny the people that they're American born prophet? You deny them? You deny them by creating something else? And I suppose to not say nothing? I'm supposed to not say nothing? If you go to Detroit, <coughs> if you go to Detroit in 1930, where in 1929 they had a roster of 4,000 members, you mean tell me? You mean tell me nobody know what a Moorish American is? Nobody? Nobody knows what a Moorish American is. 
You go to Detroit, whether you're a silk salesman or whether you are a pharmaceutical salesman, you go to Detroit. And you don't know what a Moorish American is. You deny that they even exist. Well, the same way that it was denied, I must bring into remembrance. I must bring into remembrance. And when you talk about you guys have never built anything, I can show you the receipts of all the buildings. I can show you the receipts. When temple number four was taken over, do you know they had a standing income of almost a half a million dollars for one year? So this brother Abdul Al Rizzi, they had a standing economy of over a half a million dollars. Yes. So why wouldn't somebody come and try to weave their way in a displaced group of people who have just lost the profit? Why wouldn't they? A half a million dollars. And one thing about Prophet Nobu Ali, how would somebody know that they have a half a million dollars? Because Prophet Nobu Ali published it. He published it. And many of those publishments, many of those publishing went around the planet by the way of the wire. Many of them. So when somebody say the Moors haven't built nothing, if you had 4,000 people embracing you by saying that you're the prophet now, these people was, they was hung up on religious zeal. The prophet said that Moors didn't know what he was doing. They was hung up on religious zeal. So the first one that showed up after uh, uh, the abandonment of Lomax Bay, they was ready to accept anything. And that's what they did. And that's why the Moorish Science Temple of America not only show proof of the money, Let me see. Where can I show proof of the money? Anybody who have followed me before, they've seen these receipts. I've shown proof of the money. So I don't feel like digging it up right now. And it's going on 11 o'clock. I've showed proof of Temple Number 4 finances multiple times. Multiple times. Multiple times. No, I got, I got the receipts from 1927 and 1928. You follow me, but with that being said, family, I'm going. I'm going to stretch out and get out of here, family. I hope uh, uh, my brothers in the NOI are still my friends tomorrow. Um, and if they still my friends tomorrow, that means they are the friends of truth. And just because I disagree, I'm going to fight to my last breath for the teachings of the Prophet Noble Drew Ali. It is what it is. We will not be denied. It is what it is. Absolutely, the guys. The Japanese, the one that got deported was kicking that bread out. He helped formulate their military drills that they had already been starting in Temple Number 4. He had already infiltrated Temple Number 4. Absolutely. So with that being said, family, I got to get out of here. Islam, peace and love, family. I'm gone. I'm gone. I think I'm gone.